welcome to another WJC A-Level Physics question. This one was requested by somebody on YouTube and they wanted to go through the Unit 3 2017 paper question 4. Now the first part of the question says heat is applied to an ideal gas in a sealed container of fixed volume. Explain carefully the physical processes that cause an increase in the temperature and the pressure of the gas. And this was the six mark QER question from that year. So how about we start with the first law of thermodynamics, which is Q equals delta U plus W. In that equation, W is the work done either, well, technically by the gas, but could be on the gas as well if we've got a gas that's decreasing in volume. The important point is, because in this question the volume is fixed, we know that W must be equal to zero. So Q, the heat supplied by the gas, is equal to delta U, the change of internal energy of the gas. Now it's important that we're clear in our minds exactly what we mean by internal energy. And internal energy U is defined as the sum of the potential and kinetic energies of the molecules. So let's just write that down. Now for a gas, the, the potential energy, I'll just call it P to save a bit of writing, is negligible because our gas molecules are far apart on average. So what this basically means is that Q here is going to be leading to an increase in the kinetic energy of the molecules. Now, if our molecules have more kinetic energy, then we see that on a macroscopic whole world scale as a rise in temperature of the gas. A lot of people get this uh, the wrong way around. They think that uh, if we heat up a gas, that causes the molecules, the gas molecules, to move faster. But uh, let me rephrase that. What they often think is that if we raise the temperature of a gas, that causes the molecules to move faster. But in reality, it's the molecules moving faster that leads to a, a raise or a rise in temperature of our gas on a macroscopic scale. And we can see that from equations like U equals 3 over 2 nRT or big NKT if you prefer, that are given in the data book. Little n being the number of moles, R being the molar gas constant, or big N the number of molecules, and K being uh, Boltzmann's constant. So in both cases what they show us is that the internal energy is proportional to the temperature. So first part is explained because that increase in internal energy, well just increase in U rather than in uh, delta U here, leads to a rise in temperature. Now, if the gas molecules are moving faster, they're going to be colliding with the walls of the container more often, and pressure is caused by the gas molecules colliding with the walls of the container. So, let's say something along this line. So, gas molecules collide with container walls more often, more frequently. And because they're moving faster, there'll be a greater change of momentum in every collision. So in simple terms, the gas molecule is going to head towards the wall with a momentum mv, it's going to bounce off the wall of the container. Remember that one of the assumptions of kinetic theory is that these uh, collisions are elastic. So it's going to bounce off the, the wall with a momentum of minus mv. The change of momentum here would be technically minus 2mv. 
right? But basically the point is that our gas molecule's momentum has changed in the collision and if the gas molecule was moving faster because it has more kinetic energy then this change of momentum will be bigger. Now Newton's second law which we can abbreviate to N2 tells us that resultant force is rate of change of momentum. So if the momentum of the gas molecules has changed, the wall has exerted a force on the molecules. And from Newton's third law, that means that the molecules exert a force an equal force on the wall of the container. And as we said in this piece up here, because the gas molecules are moving more f uh, quickly, they're going to collide with the walls of the container more frequently, so there's more collisions per second, each collision with a greater change of momentum, so therefore the force exerted on the wall will be greater at a, you know, when heat is applied. So let's just say that the force is increased. And remember that we can calculate pressure from force over area. So if we've got a greater force acting on the same area, we've got a, a greater pressure. So that explains the rise in pressure of the gas. Part B. We've got a container of fixed volume contains oxygen gas at a temperature of 293 Kelvin. And we've got five oxygen mo uh, molecules with speeds of 400, 425, 450, 550 and 625 meters per second. And we've got to determine their RMS speed. Well, the root mean square speed, RMS, literally means it's the square root of the means of the squares of the gas molecules. So to calculate this, we are going to do 400 squared plus 425 squared plus 450 squared plus 550 squared plus 625 squared we're going to divide it by 5 so that calculation would give us the mean of the squares of the speeds of the gas molecules and we're simply going to root that to find the root mean square speed the answer to that is 497 to the nearest whole number. Whole number seems sensible because all of the other figures are sort of whole numbers. For part two, using an appropriate calculation, determine whether or not the RMS speed calculated in part B1 is consistent with the expected RMS speed of the gas molecules of the gas at this temperature. And we're given the relative molecular mass of the oxygen gas is 32. So one way of thinking about this is to think about the formula where we have U equals 3 over 2 nKT given in the data book where n is the total number of molecules and U is the internal energy. Now as we said the internal energy is basically the sum of the kinetic energies of our gas molecules. So n molecules each have a, a mean kinetic energy of half mc squared bar. missed out the n. We can cancel the n's, we can even cancel the 2's and we're left with mc squared bar equals 3kt and therefore to find the root mean square speed we're just going to do the square root of 3 times k which we know is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 given in the data book times the temperature which was 293 Kelvin Divided by m, now m here is the mass of one gas molecule and we know that the relative molecular mass of the gas is 32 and it's a really useful thing to remember that the relative molecular mass of the molecule tells us two very important things. It tells us the mass of a mole of gas molecules is 32 grams or 32 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms but it also tells us that a mass of a molecule is 32 u's and a u given on the front of your data book is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 Kelvin. If we put those figures into a calculator, you will end up with about 478 Kelvin.
uh, sorry, 478 meters per second. And that answer is relatively close to the 497 that we calculated in the first part. So the answer is consistent. Finally, in the question, if the gas in the container is heated and the pressure of the gas increases by 20% of its initial value, determine the RMS speed of the molecules of the gas. Well, one way of doing this would be to, you know, to try to calculate the pressure of the gas. In fact, thinking about it, we can't actually calculate the pressure of the gas without knowing the volume. So instead, we're going to look at the equation given in your data book, P equals one third rho C squared bar, where rho is the density of the gas. But we've not changed the mass of the gas. We've still got the same number of gas molecules in there. The volume was fixed. So rho is a constant. And that means we can rewrite that equation into a proportionality equation and say that P, uh, the pressure of the gas, is proportional to C squared bar. And hence, the root mean square speed is proportional to the square root of the pressure. So our new root mean square speed is going to be calculated by, well, if we think about a 20% increase in pressure, we've now got 120% of the original pressure, or the original pressure times 1.2. So what we're going to do is we're going to square root 1.2, that 120%, multiply it by the original root mean square speed of 478 meters per second, and that will give us an answer of 523 meters per second. So the neatest way of doing this by far is a bit of proportionality. Okay, I hope everybody found that useful. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Goodbye.